good morning dear students uh, today we are starting a new chapter its name is radioactivity um i will make two videos on this topic and this is the first video and few of the topics uh, related to subtopics related to the radioactivity we will cover in this video and the rest of the topics uh, some of the topics i will repeat in my second video my name is farhan mazhar the course we are studying is physics 5054 let's start so uh, one very interesting thing which we are starting directly is the radioactivity and the radioactive substances in nature there are some substances uh, they give out a radiation and some particles are given out from their nucleus and some electromagnetic waves or rays are given out of their nucleus so um, those substances which out, give out uh those particles uh, from their nucleus their nucleus are basically unstable so what happens they give out particles from their uh, from their nucleus so we will study about those particles and th th there are many many kinds of particles which are given out in the radiation but in our course of four levels we will be only studying the three things and we will study their properties what are they and and uh, what are their behaviors in different uh, uh, circumstances okay so uh, the materials um, uh, which give out radiation those are called the radioactive substances and the particles or electromagnetic waves they give out the, that is called radiation okay so it should be clear to you that radioactive substance is the name the substances the atoms the molecules which are give out the radiation and the radiation itself is those uh, those uh, particles or those electromagnetic waves which are given out by those substances so we need to distinguish between two things radioactive substances and the radiation that they give out many naturally occurring substances are radioactive usually they these are not very concentrated so that they do not cause a problem there are two ways in which radioactive substances can cause us problem so you see uh, the materials which are radioactive which are naturally radioactive and uh, in normally they are not concentrated on one place so the radiation given out by them is not of that uh, intensity so that do not cause problem and uh, there, there are two ways in which can they can cause problem one is uh, you are exposed to their radiation the one method is that you are exposed to their radi radiation we call it irradiated and uh, another way of uh, the way in which they can harm you is that by some method they get inside your body okay and uh, when they get inside your body then we say that the person is contaminated so if a radioactive substance gets inside us its radiation can harm us we say that we have been contaminated if the radiation they produce hits our bodies we say that we have received a dose of radiation we have been irradiated so there are two ways in which you can uh, radiation can be a problem for you one is that you get you are exposed to the materials which are giving out radiation and your body is receiving the radiation from them and the other way uh, is that somehow the the radioactive substance get inside your body so uh, you know in our daily life um, we have uh, in our environment the radiation from the radioactive substances is always present so but we are we call it the background radiation background radiation is that radiation which is all the time present around us uh, there is no uh, you can see the significant source of that radiation around us means i mean there is no concentrated source of radi radiation around us but that radiation is all the time present around us and our bodies they have adopted for that radiation so they are not that uh, harmful for us we call that radiation which is all the time present around us we call it the background radiation 
and the background radiation, um, the causes of the background radiation, we will be studying that. What are the causes of the background? Why is there is radiation present around us? And we will see what are the sources from where the radiation is coming all around us. But our bodies have adopted it uh, to that background radiation. In fact, we, we are exposed to low levels of radiation all the time. This is known as background radiation. In addition, we may be exposed to radiation from artificial sources, such as the radiation we'll see if we have a medical x-ray. You must have heard that whenever you have an x-ray, and uh, whenever you have an x-ray, they say that uh, you need to, at least there should be a six months gap between the one x-ray and the next x-ray. But in Pakistan, you know, in a, in a single day, you can have many x-rays and on the next day, you can again have x-rays. So, but if you actually take the precaution because x-rays have radiation, so when you, whenever you go for an x-ray, uh, there should be a gap between one x-ray and the next x-ray. So figure 23.4 shows the different sources that contribute to the average dose of radiation received by the people in the UK. This data is about the UK. Uh, it is divided into natural background radiation about 87% and the radiation from the artificial sources, about 13%. So about 87%, the radiation which causes the background radiation, 87% is the, coming from the natural uh, sources. And 13% uh, is coming from the artificial sources. We will look at these different sources in turn. So here we have a graph and uh, if you allow me, okay, so, so in this graph, 87% of the background radiation is coming from the natural uh, resources. For example, 10% of the, of the background radiation is coming from the cosmic rays. 10% is coming from the cosmic rays and 12% uh, is coming from the food and drinks, 51% is coming from the atmosphere, and the 14% is coming from the ground and building. So uh, approximately at 87 is coming from the natural background, um, background sources. And 12% is coming from the medical uh, procedures and treatments and 0.4% uh, and, uh, is coming is the fallout from the weapons test. You know, people are doing the atomic, uh, atomic weapons, atomic bombs. Their test, once their test is done, so for centuries, that radiation will remain in the atmosphere. Air travel or TV sets, 0.4%. Uh, At work, we are getting 0.2%. And nuclear discharge, that is less than 0.1%. So these are the artificial sources. From artificial sources, 13% uh, background radiation is from the artificial sources. And 87% is from the natural sources. So uh, this question also comes in paper. And in paper, they ask you what is the cause of the background radiation. So you have to name one or two sources of the background radiation. So here we go. Here we have, it says, uh, the air is radioactive. It contains a radioactive ga gas called radon, which seeps up to the Earth's surface from radioactive uranium rocks underground. Because we breathe in air all the time, we are exposed to radiation from this substance. This contributes about half of our annual exposure. This varies widely from country to country and from one part of a country to another, depending upon how much uranium there is in the underlying rocks. The ground contains radioactive substances. We use materials from the ground to build our houses. So we are exposed to radiation from these our food and drink is also slightly radioactive living things grow by taking in material from the air and the ground so they are bound to be radioactive inside our bodies our food then exposes us to radiation 
finally the radiation reaches us from space in the form of cosmic rays some of this radiation comes from the sun some from further out in the space most cosmic rays are stopped by the earth's atmosphere if you live up a mountain you will be exposed to more radiation from this source so you know in this chapter um, there is less to explain most of the things we only need to study to gather we need to read them and if there's a problem we will discuss them so in this chapter mostly we have to do the reading together because natural background radiation is around us all the time we have to take account of it in experiments it may be necessary to measure the background level and then to subtract it from the experiment measure for example measurements if for example if i have uh, a sample of uranium and with the help of a detector i measure its uh, what is the reading of the its radiation so for example if the radiation uh, its reading on the detector is for example 40 and if the reading is 40 then what we will do we will check what is the background radiation and from that uh, reading for example the reading was 40 so for example if the background radiation is 5 so from 40 you will subtract the 5 and the answer will be 35 so the actual uh, radiation given out by that sample of uranium is 35 you see whenever you take a reading with the with a detector to find out how much reading is coming out of a sample uh, automatically the background radiation is added in it so if you want to clearly measure Uh, if you want to only measure the radiation given out by a sample so you measure it with the detector and then you subtract the background radiation uh, from the reading you get the uh, the value of the radiation given out by the sample so when you want to find out the background radiation you simply switch on your detector without any sample of the radioactive or without any radioactive sample near you just open your detector and you note down what is the reading on the detector of the radiation so that will be the background radiation most radiations uh, so i we as we have we came to know that the background radiation is formed by the natural sources and also from artificial sources so most radiation from artificial sources comes from medical sources this includes the use of x rays and gamma rays for seeing inside the body and the use of radiation for destroying cancer cells you must have sir, i have learned this in your uh, electromagnetic spectrum chapter that we use the gamma rays and x rays to kill the cancerous cell there is always a danger that exposure to such radiation may trigger cancer they treat cancer and they can also cause cancer because you know the radiation it can cause the mutation of the dna and when the dna of a cell is changed so uh, overgrowth of the cells can take place and they can cause cancer medical physicists are always working to reduce the level of radiation used in the medical procedures overall many more lives are saved than lost to this beneficial use of radiation so that use of radiation is very useful but it also has its side effects today most nuclear weapon testing is done today most nuclear weapons testing is done underground for for example if you remember in the, when the pakistan did its nuclear uh, bomb testing they 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 have a tunnel in the chaghi uh, in balochistan and inside that tunnel they did the uh, that nuclear power uh, nuclear bomb testing so mostly now we dig the tunnels and the tunnels are like 2 km into the ground and then we do the uh, nuclear bomb testing inside the ground but still it has uh, its problem in the past bombs were detonated on land or in the air and this contributed much more to the radiation dose received by people around the world you know um, uh, now we to do the atomic bomb testing inside the in, inside the tunnel but before that 
the testing was done open in the open grounds and in the open air so that radiation which was produced that will be with us uh, for many 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 years and many centuries that radiation will not go away so due to those the radiation which was produced the radiation radioactive material which was spread and uh, by those testings that is still present around us and that is causing the background radiation if you fly if you fly in an aircraft you are high in the atmosphere you are exposed to more cosmic rays uh, this is not a serious problem for the occasional flyer but airline crews have to keep a check on their exposure so uh, i think that this is self explanatory many people such as medical radiographers the people who are taking the x rays radiographers and staff in a nuclear power station work with radiation overall this does not add much to the national average dose but for individuals it can increase their dose by up to 10% so the people who are working in these facilities they are exposed to more dose of the radiation finally small amounts of radioactive substances escape from the nuclear industry which processes uranium for use as the fuel in the nuclear power station and handles the highly radioactive spent fuel after it has been used you must have heard that that once the uranium is used in an atomic reactor then it's a big problem to where to dispose uh, that used fuel because that used fuel will remain radioactive for thousands of years so normally what people do uh, the real uh, the actual thing is they dig tunnels and they bury that uh, used fuel in the in those tunnels but uh, some irresponsible people uh, what they do they throw that used uranium and they pack it inside the barrels and they throw it in the sea so this is the word this is happening so that's very dangerous okay so the radiation um, or radioactivity was discovered in in 1896 by henry packerel so they have uh, a rock and that was found in france and what they did they have a rock and when that rock was exposed to sunlight and then they bring that rock inside the room that rock will remain uh, bright for a very long time and uh, then they discovered when they started experimenting on it on those rocks then they also discovered an interesting thing that those rocks and they were able to they give out some kind of light invisible light because when you put them uh, near a photographic film you see if if you might have studied that that the photographic film if light falls on the photographic film the image of that light is formed on the photographic film so normally what we do we put the photographic films inside a black paper for the safety purpose when we want to use the photograph film and then we bring the photograph film out of that paper and we fall the light on it and the image is formed but uh, what henry packerel discovered that if you have the photographic film and those stones were put near the photographic film the images of those stones were always formed on the photographic film um they have covered the photographic film in the protective black color covering but still whatever the light was coming out of those stones which was invisible to human eye that make its mark on the photographic film so from there they came to know that out of these stones some kind of rays or some kind of radiation is coming up so this is how the radiation was discovered radioactive was discovered by a french physicist henry becquerel in 1896 he had been investigating some phosphorescent rocks 
rocks that glow for a while after they have been left under a bright light. His method was to leave a rock on his window sill in the light, then he put it in a dark drawer on a piece of photographic film to record the light it gave out. He suspected that rock containing uranium might be good for this, but he discovered something even more dramatic. The photographic film was blackened even when the rock had not been exposed to light. He realized that some kind of invisible radiation was coming from the uranium. What was more, the longer he left it, the darker the photographic film became. Uranium gives out radiation all the time without any obvious supply of energy. So that's how they discovered the radiation coming out of the uh, uranium. So here you have seen a photographic, uh, a photographic film which was developed. And you can see these spots are formed when this photographic film was put near the uranium rocks. And Bacquerel had discovered a way of revealing the presence of invisible radiation using photographic film. This method is still used today. One of his first photographs of radiation is shown in the figure 23.5. You can see that figure. So, so you can see uh, by the help of the photographic film, the Henry Bacquerel was, uh, uh, was able to uh, find that some rays are coming out of the rocks which have uranium. And even if those rocks are not given any kind of energy, means heating, exposure to light, no form of energy is given to them, the rocks still give out uh, radiation or rays from them. And they can make their mark on the photographic film. You see? And so this was, um, you know, uh, and another interesting thing they discovered is that the more the time the rock is placed near the photographic film, the darker is the image form on the photographic film. It means that the the rays which are coming out of the uranium, they are continuously coming. So the more time you give them, the more rays out of the uranium will be coming and making their mark on the photographic paper. It takes a while to expose and develop a photographic film. For a quicker measurement of radiation, we can use a Geiger counter. Uh, it's, a, it's a device which is used uh, in my next video, we will study about this. The detector is a Geiger-Muller tube, which is held close to a suspect, suspective source of radiation. The radiation enters the tube, which produces an electrical pulse, electrical pulse, which every time it detects any radiation. The electronic counter in the man's left hand adds up these pulses. It can give a click or beep for each for each pulse. In the photograph, the Geiger counter is being used to check the radiation levels of moss gathered from a mountainside in France. Regular checks are made on samples of air, soil, vegetation, and water for the 20 kilometers around the nuclear power station. Other analytical equipment can also be seen on the table. So in this diagram, you can see he's holding a, this is called the GM tube the Geiger molar tube, we will study in the next video or in detail how the GM tube works. So the basic function is when the radiation enters in this GM tube, it ionizes the gas inside this tube and by doing so, a pulse of current is generated and in, in this man's hand is the counter which counts how many pulses are created. And uh, you count those pulses. This this device basically counts how many pulses are generated, and uh, it gives out the sound. Beep, 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 beep. It gives out the sound. Click, 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 click. So whenever the radiation level is higher, that sound of click, click becomes more frequent. We will study about this in detail. 
another very important thing about radio radioactivity is that the process of radiation is is totally random and remember this word in when you when I'm, when you will be practicing the questions and when you will be doing the past papers and even in your mcqs the radio radiation or radioactivity is a random process so you see whenever a nucleus a radioactive uh, atom you have and its nucleus and the nucleus gives out the radiation and when the nucleus give out the radiation that nucleus uh, converts into some other element so the first element the original element is called the parent nucleus and the new element which is formed after the giving giving out the radiation that is called the daughter nucleus so you see when the process of radiation is taking place the original uh, element the atoms of the original atom uh, element which are radioactive as the radiation is given out uh, its nucleus break down and it gives out radiation and that nucleus converts into another element so we call it radioactive decay so the parent nucleus is converted in converting into daughter nucleus and the it is giving by giving out the radiation so if you have a sample if you have a sample of uh, of uh, of a radioactive substance then and you are measuring its uh, radiation uh, radiation by the help of a detector so if you are let's say after short intervals of time you are checking again and again how much is the radiation every time the radiation will be different so that is the reason is because the radi radiation or radioactive decay is a random process and what do i mean when i say random process it means that you cannot predict that out of this sample which atom will decay which nucleus will decay we cannot predict we never know that which atom is going to decay and we can also not uh, predict the time when a, when a, when a nucleus will decay we cannot predict which nucleus will decay we cannot predict at what time a certain nucleus will decay and so that's why we say that the radioactive decay is a random process so i have told you what is radioactive decay so for example if you have a sample of uranium and it's decaying so what will happen whenever its nucleus decays it gives out radiation the uranium convert into some other element so you see the uranium nucleus is unstable by giving out radiation it will convert into an element into a new element and that nucleus we hope will be more stable so by giving out the radiation the radioactive atoms which are unstable by giving out radiation they convert into atoms or nucleus which are more stable and the change the element also converts the randomness of radioactive decay if you listen to the clicks or beeps of a geiger counter you may notice that it's impossible to predict when the next sound will come this is because radioactive decay is a random process if you study a sample of a radioactive material you cannot predict when the next atom will decay atoms decay randomly over time similarly it is impossible to point at an individual atom and say that it will be the next one to decay if an atom on the left of the sample just decayed we cannot predict that an atom on the right of the sample will be the next to decay as a result if you count the number of particles from a source in for example one minute the number will fluctuate sometimes above and sometimes below an average value to understand the nature of radioactivity we need to picture what is going on at a microscopic level on the level of atoms and nuclei two questions we need to answer are why are some atoms radioactive 
while others are not what is the nature of radiation they produce radiation is emitted by nucleus of an atom we say that the nucleus is unstable an unstable nucleus emits radiation in an attempt to become more stable this is known as radioactive decay fortunately most of the atoms around us have stable nuclei when the earth formed about 4500 million years ago there were many more radioactive atoms around however as those millions of years have passed most have decayed to become stable in the distant past the level of the ground background radiation was much higher than it is today these slides are self explanatory i think so here you can see that uh, radiation comes from the nucleus of a radioactive atom so this is a nucleus of radioactive so you see alpha so to see the radiation is uh, the, in our course the radiation is basically of three kinds one is beta alpha beta gamma so this is showing the alpha this is showing beta and this is showing gamma alpha you know is a particle beta is a particle and the gamma is a electromagnetic wave alpha is like uh, the nucleus of helium alpha is like nucleus of helium it has two protons and two neutrons it's like nucleus i'm not saying atom of nuclear atom of helium i'm saying it's like the nucleus of helium it has two protons and two neutrons so this is alpha it's positively charged beta is like a electron it has negative charge and gamma is a electromagnetic wave it have no charge on it it has no mass it's purely a electromagnetic wave so whenever uh whenever a nucleus which is unstable which is radioactive nucleus which is unstable it gives out radiation the radiation can be of three kinds alpha beta gamma so we call this radioactive decay when these things are given out this nucleus it will break it will convert into some other element there are three types of radiations emitted by radioactive substances table 23.1 these are named after the first three letters of the greek alphabet alpha beta and gamma alpha and beta are particles gamma is a form of electromagnetic radiation i have already explained it to you an alpha particle is made up of two protons and two neutrons this is the same as the nucleus of a helium atom so the nucleus of the helium atom has two protons and two neutrons so its mass number is 4 and its proton number is 2 so the alpha particle is like the nucleus of helium because it contains protons it is positively charged so it's alpha particle alpha particle is positively charged it's like uh, it has two protons two neutrons it's like the nucleus of a helium atom okay beta particle is an electron it is not one of the electrons that orbit the nucleus remember this it is not one of the electrons that orbits the nucleus it comes from inside the nucleus it is negatively charged and its mass is much less than that of an alpha particle you see the beta particles come out when a neutron uh is broken when a neutron inside the nucleus is it breaks and when neutron breaks it makes a proton and a very small electron so the beta particle comes from that when a neutron breaks and it forms a proton which remains inside the nucleus and it forms a small electron which comes out and we call it beta it has negative charge on it it's like electron 
gamma rays and gamma ray is a form of electromagnetic radiation we can think of it as a wave with a very short wavelength similar to an x-ray but even more energetic alternatively we can picture it as a photon a particle of electromagnetic energy so we have alpha beta and gamma alpha and beta they are particles and the gamma is an electromagnetic ray or wave an atom of a radioactive substance emits either an alpha particle or a beta particle in addition it may emit some energy in the form of a gamma ray the gamma ray is usually emitted at the same time as the alpha or beta but it may be omitted sometimes later alpha particles have a much greater mass than beta particles so they travel more slowly gamma ray gamma rays travel at the speed of light so here we have a table and this table give you a little bit comparison of different properties of alpha beta and gamma with each other so alpha alpha the rep is represented by alpha like this or it is the helium it's like the nucleus of a helium so normally in equations sometimes we write it like this with this alphabet or sometimes we write it like helium 24 it's the nucleus of helium not an atom of helium it's made up of two protons two neutrons its mass is approximately the four times the mass of a proton the charge on it is positive and it's positive to charge the speed of the alpha particle is 3 x per 7 meter per second beta beta is represented with this symbol this is beta sometimes it is represented with e with minus 1 and zero on top it means its mass is zero and the proton number is minus 1 it's like it's made up of an electron and uh, its mass is uh, it is 1 by 1840 of a proton its mass is very very small its charge on it is minus 1 and the speed of the beta particles is 2.9 x per 8 meter per second gamma that's this is a symbol for the gamma and they are the photons of electromagnetic radiation they don't have a mass they don't have charge they are neutral their speed is equal to the speed of light 3 x per 8 meter per second so don't forget this chart this chart is very important so we have three kinds of radiations alpha beta gamma when an atom of a radioactive substance decays it becomes an atom of another element this is because in alpha and beta decay the number of protons in the nucleus changes we can represent any radioactive decay by an equation using the notation explained in the chapter 22 i will show you here we have example so here we have alpha decay so alpha decay means that when a when a radioactive nucleus give out an alpha particle you know the alpha particle its proton number is 2 and its mass number is 4 so whenever a alpha particle when a parent nucleus decays and it decays by giving out an alpha particle the daughter nucleus its proton number will be two less than the parent proton number and its mass number will be four less than the mass number of the parent nucleus for example Uh, here you can see americium 241 94 241 its proton number is 94 so americiums give out alpha particles and energy so americium will be converted into uranium you see the element has converted into another element the proton number its proton number is 94 the proton number has decreased by 2 and the mass number will decrease by 4 so the mass number in the americium was 241 and in the uranium is 237 you see whenever alpha decay happens the proton number 
uh, of the daughter uh, nucleus or the new nucleus or the new element which is formed its proton number is two less and its mass number or nucleon number is four less the reason is that the alpha particle its proton number is two and its mass number is four so if the americium which is the parent nucleus gives out the alpha particle the daughter nucleus which is uranium here will have two protons less than the parent nucleus and its mass number will be or its nucleon number will be four less than the parent nucleus i hope that you have understood here is an example of an equation of an alpha decay americium converted into uranium by giving out the alpha particle plus a lot of energy we call it the alpha decay this represents the decay of of americium 241 the isotope used in smoke detectors it emits an alpha particle represented as a helium nucleus and becomes an isotope of uranium notice that the numbers in this equation must balance because we cannot lose mass or charge so the nucleon number if you check the nucleon number here the nucleon number is 241 on on the product side we have 237 and 4 so it is also 241 the charge number here is 94 here 92 and the 2 so it will be 94 so the proton number is balanced and the nucleon number is also balanced so don't take this these equations as a chemical reaction you know this is a radioactive reaction taking place okay it's not like a chemical reaction so beta decay means that um, uh, you have a radioactive sub nucleus and it's unstable it's parent nucleus so it gives out radiation and the radiation is beta particle so when a beta particle is given uh, out and uh, try to understand this when a beta particle is given out actually what happens that inside the nucleus a neutron is broken so a neutron is broken and the neutron converts into two things one of its piece comes a beta particle which is like an electron and one of its piece becomes a proton so when the beta decay happens uh, the, the the daughter nucleus its proton number will be one more than the parent nucleus because one proton has been added in it and but its mass number its mass number will not change but the number of neutrons will reduce by one remember what will happen if a beta decay has happened the proton number of the daughter nucleus will be one more than the proton number of the parent nucleus a beta particle like a negative that will be negative electron that will be given out the nucleon number of the daughter nucleus will be equals to the nucleon number of the parent nucleus the number of neutrons in the the number of neutrons in the daughter nucleus will be one one less than the number of new and uh, sorry i said nucleon number of neutrons in the daughter nucleus will be one less than the number of neutrons in the parent nucleus so see what happened proton number increased by one nucleon number remained unchanged number of neutrons reduced by one so never forget this okay sometimes you have to write this explanation here is an example of an equation for beta decay carbon 614 it is a radioactive isotope of carbon and it gives out a beta particle so this is the beta particle here so when it gives out the beta particle nitrogen element is formed that carbon converts that carbon nucleus converts into the uh, a nucleus of a nitrogen so this daughter nucleus you see the proton number is one more than the parent nucleus seven and the nucleon number is unchanged but another thing which is not written here you should remember that 
the neutron, the number of neutrons in this uh, daughter nucleus will be one less than the number of neutrons in the parent nucleus in the carbon. This is the decay that is used in radio carbon dating. A carbon 14 nucleus decays to become a nitrogen 14 nucleus. The beta particle and electron is represented by E minus 10. If we if we could see inside the nucleus, we would see that a single neutron has decayed to become a proton. So when a new a, a, a neutron and decays, it forms a proton and a beta particle. I have already explained it to you. For each of these two beta decay equations, you should be able to see that the nucleon numbers and proton numbers are balanced on both sides. We say that in radioactive decay, nucleon number and proton number are conserved. So here, the radiation which is given out uh, from any sample, for example, if you have uranium and it is giving out radiation, and we can pass that radiation uh, when you put the photographic in front of them, the, the radiation forms a mark on the photographic film. But you can do an interesting thing. You can pass the radiation of from coming from the source. You can pass it through uh, electric field. And for example, this there here we have a, a source. It's giving out radiation. And what we did, we pass the radiation through the electric field. And when I say electric field, I means I have two plates here. One is positively charged. The other one is negatively charged. And when the radiation passed through this electric field, the radiation divided into three parts, alpha, beta, and gamma. And when you observe it, uh, you will see that the alpha will be attracted towards the negative plate. The gamma will go undeflected by the electric field. And the beta will be deflected towards the positive plate. From here, we came to know that the alpha has a positive charge on it because it is attracted. When you pass it through the electric field, the alpha particles, they are attracted towards the negative terminal or neg negative electrode. So which shows that the alpha particles have positive charge. The beta particles, they have negative charge because when you pass the radiation through the electric field, the beta particles are bended towards the positive electrode. This shows that the beta particles have negative charge on them. The gamma, the gamma rays, they are not affected by the electric field. They go straight. They are undeflected. They don't go uh, bend toward positive or negative. So gamma rays are neutral. They are not affected by the electric field. In this B figure, you can see that we have, we have a source of radiation and the radiation is coming out of this source. And here we have a, a North Pole and a South Pole. So what we are doing basically, we are passing the radiation through the electric, uh, or through the magnetic field. So there we have the magnetic field from North to South. And what you will observe that uh, when the radiation passes through this magnetic field and the beta particles, they are bended upward. And the gamma rays, they are undeflected. They have no effects of electromagnetic field on them, uh, of the magnetic field on them. And the gamma rays, so the alpha rays, they are bended downward. So if you apply the left hand rule Fleming's left hand rule and you study what happened here so let's apply the Fleming's left hand rule uh, the magnetic field was from north to south the charged particles were going in this direction so my thumb pointed downward so if there is any positive particle that should bend downward 
and in this figure you can see the alpha particles banded downward so it means the alpha particles are positively charged the beta particles banded opposite to the alpha particles so it means that the beta particles they are negatively charged so you see three uh, radiation is of three kinds it is alpha beta and gamma by subjecting the radiation to the electric field we are able to separate the alpha beta and gamma by subjecting the radiation to magnetic field we are able to separate the alpha beta and gamma from these two experiments we can surely say that the alpha in the electric field it bends towards the negative and in the magnetic field it followed the left hand rule and bends it downward from here we conclude that the alpha particles are positively charged the beta in the electric field it bends towards the positive electrode and in the magnetic field it bended opposite to the left hand rule the direction predicted by the left hand rule it bended opposite to that so beta is definitely negatively charged gamma is uh, not deflected in the electric field the gamma is not deflected in the magnetic field so there is no effect of electric and magnetic field on the gamma rays so from here we conclude that the gamma rays are neutral they don't have any kind of positive or negative charge them i hope that this diagram is clear to you how can this is not this is just the reading of these slides how can we tell the difference between these three types of radiations one method is to see how they behave in the electric and magnetic fields because they have opposite charges alpha and beta particles are deflected in opposite directions when they pass through an electric field alpha particles are attracted towards a negatively charged plate while beta particles are attracted towards a positively charged plate gamma rays are not deflected because they are uncharged alpha and beta particles are charged so when they move they constitute an electric current because of their opposite signs the force on them in a magnetic field are in opposite direction this is an example of motor effect the direction in which the particles are deflected can be predicted using fleming's left hand rule as in an electric field gamma rays are not deflected because they are uncharged take care in this diagram the alpha he is talking about the diagram which we have discussed the alpha particles is being deflected downwards and the beta particles upwards they are not being deflected towards the north or the south pole so another whenever this decay happens uh, accompanying this decay uh, alpha beta gamma um, they are given out plus lot of energy is also given out So whenever this decay happens, uh, when a nucleus decays and converts from the parent nucleus into daughter nucleus, whenever this radioactive decay happens, lot of energy is also given out. Radioactive substances release energy when they decay. Before they decay, this energy is stored in the nucleus of the atom. When it is released, it is in two forms. An alpha or beta particle is fast moving. the nucleus that has emitted it recoils newton's third law of motion both particles have kinetic energy or a gamma ray transfer energy as electromagnetic radiation when physicists were trying to understand the nature of radioactivity they noticed that radiation can pass through solid material in figure 23.5 we saw how backwell showed that some of the radiation from uranium could pass through copper different types of radiations can penetrate or penetrate means pass through different thickness of material alpha particles this is called the penetration power or the penetration ability of alpha particle the alpha particles have very large size and they have uh, when they travel in air 
they travel only few centimeter alpha particles if you project them in air they will travel only 3 4 5 cm not more than that they will be stopped by the air so the penetration power of the alpha particle is very low alpha particles are the most easily absorbed they can travel about 5 cm in air remember this number 5 cm in air before they are absorbed they are absorbed by a thin sheet sheet of paper the alpha particles if you put a uh a uh, paper in their path the alpha particles will be stopped alpha particles cannot pass through a paper the beta particles their penetration power in air could be uh a uh, few meters and they can be stopped by uh, a metal sheet Uh, for example if you have 5 mm al aluminum sheet the beta particles cannot pass through that metal but in air they can travel a um, few meters so the penetration power of the beta is more than the penetration power of the alpha the penetration power of the gamma is very huge it can goes to many many meters maybe kilometers okay gamma radiation is the most penetrating it takes several centimeters of a dense metal like lead if you want to stop the gamma rays you will need a uh, a thick uh, sheet of lead that it can be stopped otherwise if you put a aluminum sheet in path of the gamma rays gamma radiation they will be not stopped they will pass through the aluminum foil or several meters of concrete to absorb most of the gamma radiation so the gamma radiation has very high penetration power here we have uh, a schematic diagram which shows you you see if you have alpha particles alpha radiation if you put a paper in its path the alpha particles cannot pass through even the paper their penetration power is very low the alpha particles they cannot pass through the paper so if you put a paper in their path the alpha particles will be stopped the beta particles which are represented here with the blue color the beta particles the paper cannot stop it if you put a paper in the path of the beta particles they will pass through the paper so the paper cannot stop the beta particles but if you have a uh, aluminum foil uh 5 mm thick aluminum aluminum foil put it in the path of the beta particles and the beta particles will be stopped so the beta particles they cannot be stopped they, they are able to penetrate through the paper but they cannot penetrate through the aluminum foil or uh, a sheet of aluminum whose uh, has 4 mm or 5 mm thick the gamma radiation it cannot be stopped with the paper it cannot be stopped with the aluminum uh, sheet it can only be stopped by uh, a thick sheet of a thick piece of lead these ideas about penetrating penetrating powers are represented in the figure 23.9 the penetrating power radiation is greatest for gamma radiation and least for alpha radiation this is related to their ability to ionize the material they are passing through the ionization ability we will study okay now another property of alpha beta and gamma ability of alpha beta and gamma is ionization you see when they travel through air what they do when they travel through air they collide with the atoms which come in their path for example atoms of air and when these charged particles alpha and beta when they collide with atoms what they do they knock out electrons from those atoms 
so when they knock out electrons from the air atoms or the molecules which our atoms come in their path they knock out electrons from them with the help of electrostatic attraction or by just uh, uh, pumping in them so what happen those atoms which come in their path they become ions they convert into their ions and when those atoms convert into the ions they become active in chemistry you must have studied that when something converts into ion it becomes active it starts reacting with other things so ionization power of the alpha particle it has very strong ionization power due to its size and due to its charge so when it collides with the an atom which is in its path it knock out electrons and convert it into its ions so the alpha particles they have the largest or the highest ionization ability and the gamma has the least the beta has the medium ionization ability when radiation passes through air it may interact with the air molecules knocking electrons from them so that the air molecules become charged we say that the air molecules have become ionized the relative ionizing effects are as follows alpha particles are the most ionizing gamma radiation is the least ionizing because the radiation from the radioactive substances cause ionization of the materials that absorb it it is often known as ionizing radiation consider an alpha particle passing through the air an alpha particle is the slowest moving of all the three radiations and has the largest charge as the alpha particle collide with an air molecule it may knock an electron from the air molecule so that it becomes charged the alpha particle loses a little of its energy it must ionize thousands of molecules before it loses all of its energy and comes to a halt nonetheless alpha radiation is the most strongly ionizing radiation you see alpha particles their ionization power is greatest but their penetrating power is lowest the reason is because when they pass through the air for example through air so they ionize the air molecules or air atoms or whatever atoms come in their path so they are uh, they are losing energy whenever they are ionizing an atom they lose energy and after ionizing some atoms they become to a halt a beta can a beta particle can similarly ionize air molecules however it is less ionizing for two reasons its charge is less than that of an alpha particle and it is moving faster so that it is more likely to travel straight past an air molecule without interacting with it this is why beta radiation can travel further through air without being absorbed gamma radiation is uncharged and it moves fastest of all so it is the least readily absorbed in air and therefore is the least ionizing lead is a good absorber because it is dense its atoms are packed closely together and its nuclei are relatively large so they present an easy target for the gamma rays gamma rays are stopped by you know the lead the sheet of lead so you should be able to see the pattern linking ionizing power and absorption alpha radiation is the most strongly ionizing so it is the most easily absorbed and the least penetrated so this property you should remember gamma radiation is the least strongly ionizing so it is the least easily absorbed and the most penetrated so uh 
X-rays, X-rays do not come out of radioactive uh, atoms. The X-rays do not come out of the nuclei of radioactive uh, isotopes. But X-rays also have an ability to ionize the air molecules or other molecules. X-rays are also caused also cause ionization in the materials they pass through. And said, so they are also classed as ionizing radiation. X-rays are very similar to gamma rays, but X-rays usually have less energy. They have longer wavelength than gamma rays, and they are produced by X-ray machines, stars, and so on, rather than by radioactive substances. So, so um, I want to explain to you radiated and radioactive, these two terms. When something has been exposed to radiation, we say that it has been irradiated, irradiated although it absorbs the radiation, it does not itself become radioactive. The thing, for example, if I was going, I, there is a sample of uh, radiation. So radiation falls on my body. So I do not become radioactive. Things only become radioactive if they absorb a radioactive substance. So do not become radioactive if you, so you do not become radioactive if you absorb cosmic rays, which you do all the time. But you do become radioactive if you consume a radioactive substance. Coffee, for example, coffee, for example, contains measurable amount of radioactive potassium. Okay, my dear students, uh, by this slide, we have reached the end of this first part of the radioactivity. And I will make another another video that will be the part two of, of the radioactivity and the radioactive uh, radioactive activity chapter will be completed i hope that uh, you have understood the concept which i have tried to explain today you see in this chapter of radiation um, um, there is little uh, explanation required most of the material we have to read and um, you, you must have observed that i am reading the slides and they are self-explanatory wherever the explanation was needed i have tried to explain it explain it to you i hope that these videos are helpful to you and they are beneficial to you and my name is farhan mazar the course we are studying is physics 505 thank you very much everybody have a good day and god bless you all thank you